going to come right out and just address it off the top. I've seen your comments. I've read your emails and I have heard you loud and clear. You guys want to see more wood builds and I am so excited to share that's exactly what we are doing today. These pieces are going to be functional, they're going to be practical, and the best part is you can make them all without breaking the bank. That's right, you can make them. They're beginner friendly. I'm going to show you how to do it, so let's get into it. You're watching Whiskey and Wit. My name is Whitney and a huge welcome back to my Whiskey Craft Buddies who are here each and every week to DIY with me. If you like these types of videos, thank your fellow craft buddies because I have seen all the comments. Before we can get building, we gotta head to the hardware store. So let's go see what we need on our supply list, how to pick out your wood and what you're gonna need to grab so you can make these awesome, super easy to make projects. So if you're new to wood builds or you've never had to go purchase wood before, it can be a tad overwhelming. So let me break it down for you so you feel confident at the hardware store. We are gonna be using easy to find off the shelf lumber in today's video. And I like to buy mine at Menards. It's a Midwest chain of hardware stores and I absolutely love it. Today we are using one by two lumber in all of the projects. And that means it's one inch thick by two inches wide. Now that can make it a little bit more confusing because that's actually the nominal measurement, not the actual one, but don't worry, I've got a full beginner's guide to wood building video that I will link for you down in the description that will explain all of that and get you up and running and feeling confident. Now when you go shopping for this wood, you have a choice on doing the cheaper, more rounded edge furring strip, which is gonna be a lot more rough, or you can spend a little bit more and get the one by two by eight pieces of pine. Those are gonna be more rectangular and it makes it a lot easier for your corners to go together, personal preference. When you're selecting those boards, when I am looking for wood, you don't just wanna grab anything from the top cause that's pretty much everybody else's rejects. So I like to play Jenga essentially and go for either the middle or the bottom of the pile if I can slide it out. Now pull those pieces out, look them straight down the board like I am showing you here, get your eye at that eye level because it's hard to see if you're just looking at the piece of wood, if it's bowed and nothing is worse than getting home and realizing you have a super wonky piece of wood that you can't use. So you can also pull it out and set it on the floor to make sure you have a straight piece of wood to work with. Up first, we're gonna tackle this multi-use shelf that can be used as a wine rack to store your cups in your cupboard. It also is great for craft spaces because it fits vinyl perfectly. So the first thing you're gonna do is grab your one by twos and we are gonna cut 16 pieces to 10 inches long. Now I am following a plan that I got from my bestie who doesn't know who I am, but I love her so, Anna White. She has a YouTube channel and a website. I've talked about her before. This is one of her plans and it turned out so good. So we're gonna do 16 10 inch long pieces of the one by two, and then we are going to make sure that everything is well sanded. Then I decided to stain before I assembled so I didn't have to try to stain inside the little nooks and crannies, but you could assemble first and then stain, personal preference, but I thought this saved me a ton of time. Once I let them completely dry, I am going to grab six of those pieces and we're gonna create a square plus two lines in the center. We're gonna measure on that bottom piece three inches from either side to allow us to line up those middle pieces just like the plan. Then to attach this box with the lines in the center, we're gonna use some wood glue. I'm using this tight bond indoor outdoor wood glue and some clamps. I added the wood glue to all of the ends and I'm using my clamps to help keep everything in place while I'm adding two one and a quarter inch brad nails to each intersection point on both sides. Now, if you don't have a brad nailer, no worries. You could easily use trim nails or finish nails with the wood glue. Just leave the clamps on there and hammer them in yourself. Then with your four remaining pieces, we're going to measure from the bottom up six and a half inches, and this is to follow the plans exactly. So if you have a use in mind for this shelf and you wanna make sure that that middle part is a certain size, you're gonna to wanna to measure that before you decide. Six and a half is just what the plan said, but you could adjust it accordingly. I then took some wood glue and added all four pieces to each of the corners with four brad nails. And then when everything was attached, I grabbed my second shelf and we are going to make sure that that lines up with that six and a half inch mark. I just added some wood glue right underneath the mark and then used my brad nailer to stick it all together. Now I'm using this angle to show you how I kind of adjusted to make sure everything was straight. And the great thing about using wood glue and nails is that the wood glue is gonna hold it forever and the nails are gonna hold it right now. So it's kind of the same thought of if you use hot glue and a permanent glue, you're getting two for one to have it hold now and also hold for a long time. 
I am so happy with how this turned out. This would be such a great piece to just have in your arsenal to make for housewarming gifts or wedding gifts. You could also add a decal with a Cricut stencil or just a stencil that you purchase with somebody's last name. It would just be such a fun gift to send with a bottle of wine and just celebrate a housewarming. Now here's where it comes in when I talk about adjusting the height of the shelf. My Stanley and my Stanley knockoff cups don't fit on the middle shelf, but it would be great for smaller cups and they fit great with their handles up on top. You can put this right in your cabinet, but I'm going to be using this in my cube cubby storage because it gives me some shelves in there. I have three different shelves to do vinyl. I could do a ton of different craft supplies. So there are a ton of different uses. It would also be a great plant stand. So the sky's the limit. Once you build it, you can use it for whatever works for you. Up next, we're gonna use some one by two furring strips to make this beautiful, large family framed photo. So you're gonna start with some Dollar Tree foam board as a inexpensive backing, and you're gonna cut two pieces to either side, which are 30 inches long. Measure in between the two of them to know how long you have to cut the two middle pieces and give it a good sand. Then I like to use Walgreens Photo because they always run deals like these posters from $12.99, and I do the 20 by 30 size. Then I grabbed some double-sided tape and added it to the outside border of the foam board just to mount my photo so it wouldn't move on me. We are gonna be using staples to hook the wood in so that will help too. You don't need to have a crazy amount of tape. You just don't want it to move. Then add your border long side first, then short side, then long side, and just staple around the outside. Get your wood to line up straight and if you have any overhang, don't worry about it. We'll fix it in a minute. You're going to staple all the way around the outside and then I'm using my Ryobi little hobby knife that I absolutely love. This thing works so well and I'm trimming any overhang. Then to hang it on the wall, I'm just using one of these picture hangers, measuring the center and hammering it through the foam board into the wood. Quick and easy, so, so easy peasy and this is such a beautiful piece that would also make a great gift. I had a junk drawer that was well beyond due for a reorganization and a little bit of help. So I started by clearing everything out and then I measured. I measured from the back to the front to realize that I needed a piece to fit the whole thing that was about 20 and three quarters inches. So I went out to my garage, measured the one by two and cut it down. I did two of those and then I brought them back inside to see how they fit my drawer. Now this is a great time to remind you that these projects can also be made with a miter box if you don't have a big saw. This is how easy it works. You just line it up, mark it, take your hand and cut it. You can also cut 45 degree angles on it as well so it's great for a small space. Once I had my two pieces in my drawer, I measured in between and did a little math to figure out how big my cross section pieces needed to be. For my situation, the outside gap was four inches and the inside was three inches. So I cut those and did another dry fit just to make sure everything fit before I did any finishing. Depending on the size of your drawer, you will have different permutations of what you need, but I did two down the center and then a bunch of different options to then be able to lay out the drawer. With every project we're doing today, we're giving it a good sand and finishing it. This is Early American Stained by Minwax. And then I cleaned out my drawer and got to organizing. Something I found that was super helpful with the wood pieces after I got them kind of where I wanted them was to take some of these glue dots I used in a recent Dollar Tree hack video to stick them down to the drawer. That allowed me to get everything to stay where I wanted, but it easily comes up if I need to maneuver it. And I could create custom slots for things like my straws and all of the other random beverage assortment things that we have in this drawer. Now I can easily find all my stuff from my protein powder to my turvis lids and it is just so much more organized. I was able to do this entire drawer for under a one by two by eight piece of wood. So less than $3 for this and it is going to make my life so much easier so that I can find everything. One of my favorite things to make out of wood are these little risers because they are perfect for everywhere in your house to decorate a little vignette. I'm going to use some one by two scraps as well as some scraps that we have from our table build over Christmas. If you don't have a scrap wood pile, be sure to check the value wood section at your local hardware store because you can get things for pennies on the dollar of things that they cut that they don't need anymore and they want to get rid of. Whatever you end up using, whether it be one by or a two inch thickness board like I'm using here, you're going to want to sand it all down really good and then have your little legs be a little less than the board. So my legs here are six inches because it is a two by eight board. I'm going to put some wood glue and hook it together with clamps. Let it sit for about 15 to 20 minutes. 
and then you can remove the clamps and you will have this really beautiful modern rustic riser. Now I have a ton of distressed risers, but this is a step where you could easily distress the top if you want it to look weathered. And I decided to finish it with this Minwax stain, early American, it's one of my favorite colors, but you could paint it, stain it, whatever matches your house. This is such a great staple. You can use it for just simple vignettes like I'm showing here. They're great for Christmas displays, any seasonal displays, and it's also great for nightstands if you wanna give something a little height. Another great use for those scraps is sand them down, stain them, and you can use them as little risers in your decor. I've shared this before, but it's one of my favorite hacks. It gives things some height without it standing out. This is the same color as my floating shelf here and makes it quick and easy. I was on a hunt for a piece to go under our window in our bedroom and this bench was perfect. On top of the one by twos, we're also gonna be grabbing some two by two by eight furring strips, do the same process I outlined before to pick them out. And then we are also going to need a one by 12. So there are some off square cuts in here. So let me show you how you can create those. This is another Anna White plan. So I have the full plan linked for you down below, but I'm gonna show you how to work your way through it. So for the first cut, we're gonna do the one by two boards. We need to cut to 13 inches long at a 45 degree. Now, originally I was gonna cut it like this because of the angle, but it was just making me a little too nervous. So I swung my saw back up and ended up flipping my one by two just because it's small enough that I can do that. I rotated my saw to 45 degrees and this cut angle made me feel way more comfortable. If you do not feel comfortable with a cut that you are making, please, for the love of the good Lord, do not cut it. Don't just push through, ask for help, figure it out. That's why I pivoted. So then we're going to make that 45 degree cut and I'm going to measure 13 inches. So in the plans, it says it needs to be from long point to long point. So before I go to cut, I am going to use the light on my saw to ensure that the angle is correct. So I'm looking at the other end. If perpendicular long point to long point are gonna line up, then I can go ahead and cut. And you wanna make sure that the end of that line is going to go right to that mark that you made. Then you're gonna have this perpendicular piece cut with two 45 degree angles, and then you're gonna repeat the same process for two of them. Now for the legs, it calls for four two by two pieces cut to 15 and three quarter inches long at 15 degrees off square. So you're gonna turn it again, adjust it to 15 degrees, and then you can cut those. The ends are parallel, so literally you can just measure and cut, continue on and cut four of the pieces. To get your first end off square, I just cut a little bit off of the end. I find it's easier to just cut a little bit off of your bigger piece, and then that way you've got a much longer piece to hold on to for safety. Then for the bench seat, I'm using a one by 12 by six. I use the 1099 option and be careful when you're looking because look at how much the prices can range. The cheaper one is gonna be a little bit more rough, but I sand everything anyway, so it's no big deal. I got down, got the piece I wanted and brought it home. Now I had to cut this piece with my circular saw just because I don't have a saw big enough to cut a one by 12. So you can either make your seat smaller or have them cut it for you at the hardware store if you don't have a circular saw. Then on those four pieces that are seven and three quarters, those are gonna be the pieces that hold our legs together. So I am using pocket holes because that's what the plan called for. These are three quarter inch pocket holes and we're gonna use one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. Give everything a good sand and then I decided to assemble the legs first, stain them that way, and then we are gonna assemble the whole bench. So in this part, I made a mistake and I didn't find out until the next day. So we're gonna work through it together. I lined up the top of the long, like the wider piece here and it should have been the top of the thinner part of the wood. So check out the plans, do as I say, not as I do on this one. But you measure up from the bottom, they will give you all the details in the plan over on Anna White's page. And we are going to hook the bottom stringer. It says 15 degree angle, but I did kind of what, I felt because when it has to be a precise angle, especially for beginners and even myself, it gets a little frustrating. Once you do one leg, do the second one, and then we're gonna stain all of our pieces that are nicely sanded down. So then that way everything is good to go for assembly. I use the color Briar Smoke so it would match our entire bedroom set that was already in the room. Once everything was dry, it was time to assemble. So I grabbed my legs and lined them up. You can see they sit pretty naturally with the 15 degree bevel. So measure in four inches from the outside of either side, and then we're gonna measure up from the bottom a half inch. That helps with placement. 
Now here's another way that I misread the plans. So do as I say, not as I do. You want the four inches to be to the inner part of the leg. So I put my legs a little too far in and I had to adjust later on. So no worries, but all you're gonna wanna do is line up those legs to those marks per the plan. And I'm using two inch screws to go through the seat into the legs. Now you can try to hide these holes if you want, but honestly, the gold screws with the briar smoke stain, you can't really tell. And I'm gonna have probably a blanket or decor on the bench anyway, so I wasn't worried about it. But I worked my way through and did both of the legs. So then that way my bench had two sets of legs screwed on from the top with the two inch construction screws. Once the legs were on, it was time to add the stretcher between the two bottom pieces of our leg. So I just measured to get it centered and I also measured so there was a one inch overhang on either side. The plan called for the two inch screws, but those were a pain. So instead I decided to do one and a quarter inch screws and those worked great. They were just what we had in our garage. And instead of using the two inch screws like the plan called for, I ended up having to hand screw in one and a quarter inch and then get my drill in to drive it home, which worked fine. I could easily do it by hand because pine is a very soft wood. I made it all the way to my last step only to realize that I screwed up on this piece. I have it tilted a little too one way. So I'm just removing the screws, I'm gonna fix it. And I thought this was a great time to remind you that whether you are a newbie to wood building or you've been doing it for a long time, it is a process and part of it is just the joy in building and nobody says you can't go back fix a step everything is usually fixable so I'm unscrewing these tilting my wood piece so it is a the correct direction and then we're going to add the V pieces and be all wrapped up but if you get to a certain point and you're like oh just unscrew the screws and fix it or you know the good news is with the wood we're using today it's super cheap so you can try again and not everything's gonna turn out perfect, but it is fun to learn as you go as well. So here's what I'm working with, with my screw up. If I put one of these on, it fits fine. But if I put the second one on, it is far, far too big. So I'm wondering if I shave a little bit off of each, that should help. I did it. So I just had to make a slight adjustment. So. It's like, if you first you don't succeed, try again, but I took probably a little less of an inch off of either of these and now they're going to match up. So we're gonna come up through the bottom with screws here and we're also gonna screw on either side. Even though I screwed up royally, it still turned out. After I got all of my issues figured out, I took some more of those one and a quarter inch screws up from the bottom as well as in from either side to hook those center pieces. And I am super, super happy with how this turned out. Even though I had a couple hiccups along the way, that is part of the game. And I think it's so important to share with you guys that not everything is going to be 100% out of the park every time, but that is so much how I learned is you make mistakes, you fix them, and then you learn not to do them next time. So don't worry if you make mistakes, it's all part of the deal. I had a decent chunk of scrap left over from that bench, so I decided to use it to make this beautiful cookbook stand that I'm actually using to display our wedding album. So it doesn't just have to be for cookbooks. I used my circular saw to cut down the remainder of that one by 12 to a 13 inch long piece. And then we're gonna use the one by two scrap to cut a piece the width of the board, kind of like a little railing. Once that was cut, I'm gonna do the same length on the one by four, which ended up being a little over 11 inches because a one by 12 is less than that. And then for the back kickstands, I used some scrap two by four. I just set my saw to about 35 degrees. I measured three inches from the end, cut it at an angle, and then I used that first one essentially as a template because now I had already had my full on angle cut. So then I measured it and cut a straight cut so that I had two identical pieces. So here's everything you're looking at, a one by two, a one by four, one by 12, and then the two two by four little kickstand pieces. Like we've done in every project, we're gonna go ahead and sand everything down. And then I'm going to use some wood glue and brad nails to hook it together. Now you can use wood glue and regular nails or screws, depending on what you have, what you wanna do. You could easily use a hammer and nails to add three to four when these are hooked together. So up to you, but if you don't have the brad nailer, no worries again. 
Then my last step for construction is to add some wood glue to the angle on my two by four pieces. And I'm gonna add those to the back with wood glue. And then I'm going to measure about how far off the edge they are. So then that way I can go through the front real quick with a couple one and a quarter inch brad nails just to secure them while the wood sets because that angle is hard to clamp. Also, because the nail holes are so small, you can't even tell once it's been finished. I decided to stain mine in Early American, and I absolutely love this thing. It would be great for framed items as well that you want to give a kickstand to. You can kick it back when you need the book to be open. You can display the book closed. And like I mentioned, this is going to be a display piece for our wedding album. It's been in a drawer since we moved, and this is something I obviously want to celebrate and put out there. And so... It is going to be on display now with this scrap wood project. So I overbought on my one by two, so I decided to use it with some MDF to give our pantry a makeover. Now you could do this with plywood, especially if you have it on hand, but I love these MDF panels because they are easy to clean. If you've been around a while, you've seen me use these for my stage shots of all of my projects. And I really loved the look of this faux wood MDF. This whole sheet, which was two feet by four feet, was only $12.99. And when I'm putting it in the pantry, it makes it a lot easier to clean than plywood. Just make sure when you're grabbing it, you don't grab pieces that have a chunk out of it. And like I said, the plywood is an option, but you want to make sure that it's something you could clean. I started by measuring right over our wire shelves because I was not a huge fan of these, mainly because a lot of our boxes and items that were a weird shape would fall and kind of shift in the cracks. So I ended up measuring and I decided to make some covers that would go right over these shelves. So for the part that's gonna fit over the shelf, you have a couple different options. So if you have a circular saw at home, you can use that to cut it like I'm gonna show you today. But if you don't have one, don't worry. Most large home improvement stores, sometimes even the local ones, will offer you free cuts or sometimes you pay like 10 cents, 25 cents. So it's a minimal dollar amount. But you can go in and say, I would like you to cut this board, so this MDF, into if your shelves are like mine 16 inch strips because the width of this board is already 24 inches which is the width of my shelves i lucked out because i needed a 24 inch wide by 16 inch deep piece and this was already 24 inches wide so i was able to easily cut these pieces myself with my little rip cut craig jig thing then after i cut the piece i slid it into the pantry to make sure it was going to sit on top of my shelves the thing that I accidentally overlooked is that we have these Rubbermaid hooks, so I needed to sand down the sides so then that way it would fit over those hooks. Once I sanded it down with 100 grit sandpaper, it fit perfectly in there, so then I took that outside and used that as a template to trace on all of my other pieces to sand them down. Then for the faceplate, I decided to use one by twos. Now you're gonna notice that these are a little bit smaller than the actual shelves that I have, but for every shelf I did the rectangle MDF in the piece because I had it left over and honestly, the door to the pantry is shut all the time. So I don't need it to be super aesthetic. These were supposed to be really functional. I stained the front one by two with briar smoke because I thought that color was the closest to the MDF. And then I added some wood glue to the front of the MDF panel because yes, wood glue works on MDF. And I added my little face frame to it with some brad nails. Again, this is another situation where you could easily do a hammer and nails. If you don't have the nail gun, the nail gun just makes it a lot easier and I use it all the time. So it was a worthy purchase for me. Once those were on, I slid them right onto the pantry shelves and bada bing, bada boom, no more items falling over in the pantry. I decided to go this route because it was quicker and easier than redoing all the shelves. And honestly, I really like the wire shelves in the sense that you can easily load them up with a bunch of stuff. They're pretty strong. And I also love the MDF because I can just spray it down with the Lysol spray, clean it and put our stuff back in. This was also a great time to clean out my pantry, so I was able to get out anything that was expired and reorganized so Finn has his own snack shelf. We know where all of our cans are, and like I said, I'm not too concerned that you can see the wire because functionally, it went from this to organized, happy, and things not falling in the cracks. I truly hope this video inspired you to either get your power tools back out that you've used before, 
or give it a first try. But make sure you're staying safe. I'm here to answer your questions. Put them in the comments. And also always, always, always take pictures of what you're building and let me know because that brings me so much joy to see the craft buddies rocking out so many awesome wood projects. Catch you guys in the next one. Hit subscribe before you leave so you don't miss a future video because we do a lot of fun stuff around here. See you soon. Bye.